Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good to have you back tonight. Glad you could make it back. Um, if you will, let's grab a hymnal and turn to 546. 546. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. Let the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, Love lifted me. All my heart to Him I give, ever to Him I cling. In His blessed presence live, ever His praises sing. Love so mighty and so true, merits my soul's best song. Faithful, loving service to, to Him, belongs love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me Souls in danger look above, Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, billows his will obey. He your savior wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me. Nothing else could help Love lifted me Love lifted me Love lifted me When nothing else could help Love lifted me All right, shake hands with one another. Have a little time of fellowship. Amen. Good evening. It's good to see everyone in church tonight. Thank you for being here and for being faithful to the house of the Lord tonight. It is a joy to be able to be in God's house on this Sunday evening, and I do uh, greatly appreciate everyone being here. Uh, I want to make mention of just a couple of announcements and uh, just kind of update everybody on one or two items and then I'll come back in a few minutes and give you some prayer requests and, and some updates there as well. 
but there will not be men's prayer time Tuesday morning. Uh, there will also not be uh, Wednesday morning Bible study this week. Uh, we've had a couple of weeks of just very, uh, very busy, very hectic schedules around here. And uh, as a result of some of those items, as well as uh, a few others, we will not be doing those two events this coming Tuesday, this Tuesday and this Wednesday, as I uh, need to say. Uh, please continue to pray for the West Virginia Mission Project. Uh, the trailer is sitting outside of the Family Life Center for you to continue to bring those uh, gently used items that can be sent to West Virginia. And so again, a thank you for everyone who has uh, been getting those items together and what's being done with it. After the service tonight, uh, those uh, of you that are here, uh, the men that are here, uh, we do have a gift for you that uh, I failed to get into your hands after the morning service today. And I want to make sure that for those of you that are here tonight that you get one of those and uh, then perhaps uh, you can even help me get those into the hands of a couple of other folks uh, throughout the week this week or even uh, into next Sunday. Uh, much more that I'll share with you after the service tonight, after we're uh, not um, live streaming. Uh, but again, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for being involved in our services. Brother Chris is coming right now as we again worship the Lord in song tonight. 514, first, second, and last. 514 for the offertory. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing His mercy and His grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, He'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory while we walk the pilgrim pathway. Clouds will overspread the sky, but when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sigh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. to the prize before us soon his beauty will be old soon the pearly gates will open we shall tread the streets of gold when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we David, you ask the blessing on the offer. Dear Lord, let us give thanks for this blessed day you seem to let us see. And all the people and <coughs> the Vacation Bible School has been blessed and the service you were about to receive. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
thank you, Brother Chris. Thank you, Miss Betty Jo. I appreciate our musicians here. I know that I say that often, but truly I do not say that often enough in thanking this church family uh, for the good music that we get to enjoy every service uh, from these folks who, uh, who serve with a willing and a humble heart. And I appreciate that very, very much. Uh, before we get into the evening message tonight, I do want to remind you of uh, some items of prayer, uh, just to encourage you to be much in prayer for these folks. Uh, keep Miss Debbie Parker in your prayers, uh, Karen and Eddie Ricker. Uh, keep Miss Catherine Fannin in your prayers and an upcoming surgery consultation that'll be on Tuesday uh, for uh, that surgery that'll be scheduled soon. Uh, Miss Joanne Wiley, who is in room 223 in Cherokee Medical Center in Gaffney. Uh, Taylor Upchurch, who is at home dealing with kidney stones right now. Uh, Miss Lou Howard, who is also dealing with issues with her hip, and we want to pray for her tonight. Uh, other special spoken objects of prayer that are on your hearts this evening, special spoken objects. Yes, sir. I don't know what was going on that day. I appreciate all prayers. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, Brother Chris. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Keep Miss Bonnie's brother in your prayers. Keep praying for him. Yes, sir. Miss Christine Hyder. Um, and I want to speak to some of that here in just a little while as well. Uh, someone else, a special spoken object of prayer tonight. Let's bow our heads and hearts as we go to the Lord in prayer this evening. Father, thank you again for the opportunity to be in your house tonight. Uh, thank you for those that are here, and I pray your blessings upon them and upon their families. Uh, we think of, again, the names and the needs that have been mentioned. Uh, they are certainly uh, very heavy upon our hearts tonight. Uh, some of these that are walking through very deep waters, and we pray for, again, your hand to guide them. We pray for your protection, your mercy, and your grace to be extended to them. Father, we praise you for who you are and for what you do for us. Uh, we are reminded in your word that we are fearfully and wonderfully made and that as a result of such, we should praise you. And so tonight, uh, we want to do that. We want to praise you for how good you are to us for the ways that you bless us each and every day, for all uh, of the manifold uh, blessings that you pour out upon us. We again say thank you uh, for what you do for us. We pray that you would be pleased with what is said and done in this service tonight. Uh, may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, sir. Heather McGonigal, we want to pray for her, as well as Gwen Surratt. We want to keep praying for Gwen. Uh, Miss Renee, any updates? Yes, ma'am. And Donna Fox as well. Again, just several different prayer objects that are on our hearts tonight. Let me make mention of, of something else, and you are seeing uh, a collection of uh, baby bottles here on the piano and on the organ. 
um, those that have been filled with change and being brought back in. If I could encourage you, even this Wednesday, this coming Sunday, if you could get those baby bottles back into the church sometime uh, between now and the end of the month so that we can send those on to Cherokee Pregnancy Center, uh, I can promise you from my involvement with them as a member of the Board of Directors, uh, this is by far one of the, the biggest fundraisers for the, the Pregnancy Center every year. Uh, and, and their budget greatly, um, greatly benefits, I guess that's the best way for me to express that tonight, greatly benefits from these baby bottle offerings that are given. And uh, once again, sometimes we would not realize it, but a little change goes a long way. And how that you put all that together, and much like we saw this year with Vacation Bible School and with the children's change offering, and by the way, who won? Oh, that's right, the boys, they did. The boys won in the change offering uh, this year. But uh, all of that is just, just a great way uh, for us to see the Lord take what little we have. Uh, sometimes we wouldn't think about it as being much, uh, but just a little bit, a handful of change here and there, uh, it can indeed change lives. So uh, again, just a, a reminder about the baby bottles and the change offering. I'm going to come back to a few different items later on tonight, but right now, if you take your Bibles and turn with me in the New Testament to the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 12. Uh, for some time now, I have kind of been journeying through a little bit concerning uh, this particular chapter. And uh, I talked with you a number of weeks ago uh, concerning not only the war that was in heaven, and Joshua, I'm going to go through this real quick tonight, the war that was in heaven, how that uh, there are various names given to Satan, uh, how that he is called the great dragon, he is called the old serpent, he is called the devil, he's also called Satan. Uh, we talked about all of those different aspects of, of uh, the war that was in heaven. And then I even made mention of the wrath of Satan and looking at uh, the details surrounding the wrath of Satan. Uh, I want to talk with you again quickly tonight about uh, how that uh, the, the Lord uh, is going to deal even with the wrath of Satan. Uh, let me direct your attention tonight to Revelation 12, starting in verse number 12 this evening. And I want to read down through verse number 17 tonight. Follow along with me, if you would, tonight. Revelation 12, starting in verse 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth... He persecuted the woman which brought forth a man-child, and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood, and the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Well, certainly a, a lot of information and indeed a great amount of symbolism even found in these verses that we've read tonight. Suffice it to say that heaven will rejoice when Satan is cast out, but the earth dwellers will not. For the last half of the tribulation will mean intense suffering for the world. Uh, this then is the scene of Satan's wrath on the earth, knowing that his time is short. 
and having no more access to heaven, uh, the adversary, Satan, must vent all of his anger earthward. So I, I say all that to say this. We do have a real adversary, a real enemy. And let me lovingly remind you tonight that our enemy is not another Christian. Our enemy is not another church somewhere down the road that is preaching the same gospel that we preach. They are not our enemy. They're not. Our enemy is the devil. In fact, I could take it further and explain to you that the Christian faces three great enemies. They are the world, the flesh, and the devil. And we will always contend with those three enemies as long as we are here on earth, as long as we are in the flesh, we will deal with the world, the flesh, and yes, with the devil. And the devil is not your friend. He is not someone that you trifle with. And lovingly, let me remind you tonight that the devil is someone that you cannot on your own Go up against and expect to beat. Amen? On your own. You heard me say it that way tonight. You are no match. I am no match for the devil in me trying to go against him in my own strength and my own power. And the devil has never been a friend to the Christian and never been a friend to the church even though in the day and age in which we live the devil is certainly cozying up Quite a lot in some churches. This is where I run the risk of getting into a little bit of trouble tonight with something that I'm going to say to you. I do need you to understand that perhaps Satan may be one of the most faithful church members that ever walks through the doors of some of our houses of worship. Uh, he certainly would love nothing more than to tear churches up. Uh, and in fact, he knows his Bible far better than we do in so many cases. Uh, the devil knows the Bible well enough that he can quote it, Brother Chris. Uh, so again, uh, understand that the devil is not your friend. He is your enemy. And the day will come when Satan himself, when the dragon, will cease to have access to heaven and that he will vent all of his anger earthward. You say, what do you mean, Pastor, that he has access to heaven? I don't quite understand every aspect of this, but I do know, according to the Word of God, that even now that Satan is able to go before the throne of God and to accuse the brethren daily. We're even told in Job chapters 1 and 2 that Satan could do this, that he could go before God and say things to the Lord and just kind of on that note, it's the Lord who even calls Satan's attention to Job. That's an interesting side note for later. You see, the devil is an enemy, and he will vent all of his anger earthward. He begins with Israel. He begins with the woman and creates a wave of anti-Semitism. So let's, let's stop there for a second. What is anti-Semitism? Perhaps you've heard the term used on many occasions. What does it mean when we say that someone is anti-Semitic or that they are practicing anti-Semitism? To be anti-Semitic or to practice anti-Semitism means that you have a hatred of the Jews or of Jewish people. So I want that to sink in for a minute tonight. You are well aware of the fact, I'm sure you are well aware of the fact, that there are groups throughout the world today that are indeed, by their own proclamation, they are anti-Semitic. They are against the Jewish people. No clearer illustration can be given in history. Really, I could give you two real quick tonight. There are, are two examples in history. One's found in the book of Esther, where a man by the name of Haman so hated the Jews that he wanted to wipe them off of the planet. 
And if you are interested in studying, we went through the book of Esther here on Wednesday nights several months ago, but I would encourage you to go back and and read a little bit more about Haman. I won't leave you hanging there. You can go and, and find out a little bit more. Some of you, again, will get that in a minute. But Haman, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Tanya told me at lunch today, she said, she said, honey, the reason why some people don't laugh is because they're not funny. <laughs> thank you, sweetheart. Now, nevertheless, you, you have Haman as an example of anti-Semitism, certainly. And Nazis, with Hitler being another example of anti-Semitism. There are groups in our world today, though, that are, by their own proclamation, they are anti-Semitic. Satan has always hated the Jews because they are God's chosen people. And the vehicle, even through which salvation came into the world, Satan would like to destroy the nation, particularly as the time draws near for the Messiah to return to earth and to establish the promised kingdom. Satan would love to destroy Israel. You have heard me say this often, and I am going to repeat it yet again tonight. The day that America turns its back on Israel is the day we sign our own death warrant. We better be friendly to the state of Israel. We better be the biggest friend to the state of Israel, the nation of Israel. And God will prepare a special place where the Jewish remnant will be protected and cared for. It is interesting that the remnant's escape from Satan is described in terms of a flying eagle. For this is a repeated image in the Old Testament, especially in reference to Israel. God delivered Israel from Egypt on eagle's wings and cared for the people in the wilderness as an eagle would care for her young. Their return from Babylonian captivity was like mounting up with wings as eagles. But take note of something right here, especially in in what we have read tonight. Note that the remnant will be sheltered for the last half of the tribulation. Those those are those words that I read to you talking about times and a half a time for a time and times and half a time. That's the last part of the tribulation. Three and a half years during which that Israel would be sheltered. And the lesson for us is clear. God cares for those whom he wants to use to accomplish his purposes here on earth. If you want to be taken care of by God, then number one, you need to be one of his children. Amen? Here on Father's Day, let's rejoice in the fact that God never abandons his children. Uh, Let's realize that that he is not, in modern vernacular, God is certainly not a deadbeat dad. He takes care of his children. And he cares for those whom he wants to use to accomplish his purposes on earth. When Satan discovers that the people he seeks to kill are protected, then he turns on those who were not carried to the hidden place of safety. He will declare war, but ultimately the old serpent will be defeated. And this is where I, I again stop and, and share something with you and, and say to you that we have the joy of having read the last chapter. We know who wins. I, I don't know how many of you enjoy watching sports. Anybody? You're, you're sporting uh, an individual. Some of you don't. I, I enjoy watching them. Uh, I enjoy even watching the highlights to a game where I already know the outcome. I mean, still to this day, I will go back and I will watch highlights from September the 1st, 2007. Brother Bobby Merck, that is the day that I will never forget. September the 1st. Brother Tommy, already on top of it, right there. September the 1st, 2007, Appalachian State University went to Michigan and beat Michigan. 
I'll go back and watch highlights of that game. I already know the outcome, but I enjoy watching it. Listen to me tonight and understand something. When we read the Word of God, when we even see the things that are going on in the world today, we don't have to sit here wringing our hands, wondering what's going to happen tomorrow. We already know the outcome. And we can rejoice. We can sit here confident in what the end result will be. Satan will declare war. But ultimately, the old serpent will be defeated. I'll give you one other illustration from history tonight. If I mention the date December the 7th, 1941, what comes to your mind? Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor. A date which will live in infamy, President Roosevelt said. But it's very interesting to me, Brother David Wyatt, that after the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor, that even the Japanese admiral who had planned the attack said, I fear that all that we have done is that we have awakened a sleeping giant. He knew that they had declared war on America with the bombing of Pearl Harbor. But I wonder, even in that statement, did he not see that he was going to be defeated? How great it is to know that even in the midst of times and places where it feels as if Satan is winning and will continue to win, that in the end, he will be defeated. What a day that will be. What a day that will be. Would you bow your heads and hearts with me tonight?